I mean, it's almost as if they literally woke up overnight and decided to shut everything down overnight, but that's not the case. What's up guys, it's Sarah here and the Central Bank of Nigeria put out a letter stating that all banks in Nigeria that have anything to do with cryptocurrency should stop whatever it is that they are doing with them and no transaction involving cryptocurrency should occur. In this video, I'll be analyzing the letter that they sent, the previous 2017 letter sent by the CBN, the stance of the Security and Exchange Commission, the SEC, general thoughts and predictions of how this might turn out and I'll also leave timestamps in the video description so you can skip ahead to any section of this whole video that you need quick information about. But before we begin, make sure to tap that like button so more people can see this analysis and of course, without further ado, let's get to the video. One of my first videos of 2021 was a video on how I made $10,000 with Nigerian fintech apps from saving and investing in Bitcoin stocks and just general foreign exchange payments and receipt methods. If you've been on social media for the past couple of days, you probably would have seen the CBN letter. I'll leave links to the original letters in the description below. Everything will be linked there and all my sources. I mean, it's almost as if they literally woke up overnight and decided to shut everything down overnight but that's not the case let's go back in time a bit the first circular of cryptocurrency by the cbn was a letter in 2017 where they referred to cryptocurrency as virtual currencies the concern of the cbn was that cryptocurrency is untraceable and anonymous hence it can be used by criminals to launder money and finance terrorism they were also concerned that the nature of virtual currency is also unregulated all over the world and people may lose their money without any legal redress or solution to get that money back especially if cryptocurrency companies close down their business which would have been true in the past but now many cryptocurrency services have authentication methods however because cryptocurrency is untraceable if you send it to the wrong person on the wrong wallet you might not get it back that's a concern for the cbn in this same letter the cbn asks that banks do not use hold trade or transact in any way with virtual currency or cryptocurrency they also asked that if any bank had any customer that are trading cryptocurrency they should make sure that the customer is verified and that they are not money launderers or terrorism financiers and if they find out that they are they should discontinue their relationship with them report them immediately to the nigerian financial intelligence unit nfiu immediately the last line of that letter was that bitcoin ripple litecoin and any form of cryptocurrency is not legal tender in nigeria and it is not money and any person transacting with it is doing so at their own risk the sec the security and exchange commission in nigeria which their main duty is to regulate investments and securities in nigeria sort of gave cryptocurrency some legitimacy although not directly it's called cryptocurrency an asset a digital asset in fact in their words they said that the position of the sec is that virtual crypto assets are securities unless proven otherwise their whole point was to regulate cryptocurrency and any person individual or corporate who is involved in any aspect of blockchain related activities uh, they require that they have to establish a branch office in nigeria and one thing that the cbn and the sec also landed on is that crypto is not legal tender aka crypto is not real money all of this was in September of 2020. I'll leave a link to the full breakdown if you're interested to that in the description. All of that brings us to today where the CBN issued a letter in February of 2021 that dealing in Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency for that matter by banks is prohibited. In other words, it's been banned, it's forbidden. Any commercial bank that breaches this directive by the CBN will face severe regulatory sanctions, AKA, they might seize their license if you try to be involved with cryptocurrency. The last statement in this letter is that banks don't have any time to sort their affairs and this is a directive or a rule with immediate effect so stating that the second this letter goes public no bank should deal in cryptocurrency. More details also came out about how FBI tipped the CBN that some Nigerians were using Bitcoin to target stimulus packages from the US and the West and they were receiving a lot of money in Bitcoin, almost 200 to 300 million dollars every week. And this was on the front page of this day newspaper, I'll leave that in the description below. In fact, and on a minor note, the first letter we saw was sort of confusing and full of spelling mistakes. They wrote Central of Bank of Nigeria, they also spelled public as pubic which made some people think it was a hoax, but unfortunately it wasn't a hoax. They corrected it, they later uploaded a new letter to the CBN website. All of us Nigerians know we mostly have to use a Nigerian bank account. 
these cryptocurrency apps needed to integrate with a nigerian bank as partners so we can easily trade i.e we can easily buy and sell cryptocurrency and have a nigerian account to transfer it to and transfer it from this was going smoothly in fact according to a quartz article in the last five years nigeria has traded over 60,000 bitcoin or 566 million dollars worth of bitcoin second only to the u.s on Paxful. Not just that though, there was also a report by Stairs that Nigeria traded as high as $200 million in Bitcoin per month, aka 95 billion Naira, way more than the Nigerian Stock Exchange did in the span of three months or in the second quarter of 2020. That is crazy. Bycon CEO on Medium stated that in Nigeria they traded more than $141 million in 2020 alone or $67 billion Naira. Bitsika also posted something similar. They transacted $39 million of Bitcoin of which Nigerians deposited $18 million. That's almost a total of $200 million in a year. That's just two Bitcoin companies. If you look at all these letters, all the numbers, all that's happening, CBN is most likely worried about two things. One, the CBN is most likely worried about fraud. Nigeria is kind of infamous for the word 419. There's the case of a certain hush puppy and the quote-unquote Yahoo boys. The argument of the CBN could be that they are trying to prevent fraud, money laundering, and terrorism financing, and they are sort of right. However, the other way to have looked at this would be strategic. These companies like Quidax, as I mentioned in that $10,000 video, have limits to what you can and cannot do on the app. You can't even send money unless you have your BVN, which is an already highly traceable number in our banking system in Nigeria. The highest limit you can even send is $40,000 per day, and for that, you would need to submit tons of identification documents and even proof of residence which they would vet. The other reason which I think the CBN made a ban on Bitcoin is the strain on foreign exchange. The CBN has been making a lot of moves to help the Naira and stop more US dollars from leaving Nigeria. So last year, they banned the use of dollars for food and fertilizer imports. They reduced the spending limit on many, many Naira cards. I think the limit is like $100 per day. Recently as well, services like TransferWise, which are used to receive money from dollar to Naira sometimes, stop working. To be fair, the exchange rate on TransferWise was quite bad. I did receive way less value for my dollar. And the CBN policy just stated that Nigerians should receive their dollar directly in USD cash or a dollar account based in Nigeria, aka a domiciliary account. There's also a letter for that, which I'll leave in the description below as well. Essentially, they did and they are doing anything that stops Nigerians from demanding dollars to buy things outside the country, which from their perspective makes sense to at least help the Naira not lose its value. Now, moving back to cryptocurrency, the way these apps worked was that you had the cryptocurrency trading and exchange platform, that's the company themselves. Then in between them is the bank powering them with a virtual account that operates like a Nigerian bank account, which would help you deposit money to buy crypto or receive money when you sell crypto. One major bank that does this is Providence Bank. And keep this name in mind, we'll revisit it soon. Immediately this announcement was made, cryptocurrency companies like Quidax, Bycoins, Binance, Patricia, and the likes have issued similar statements. They mostly mentioned that now you cannot fund your Naira account anymore to buy cryptocurrency. What this means is that Nigerians cannot buy Bitcoin with their Naira. So you would only have to trade with someone you know who already has Bitcoin one-on-one -on -one and you trust. However, you can still trade on most of these platforms. You can withdraw, but it will be slower and it would be a bit tedious to buy Bitcoin as a Nigerian right now. Following this as well, a lot of apps like Piggyvest and Carrywise that help people save money couldn't use their virtual accounts. Uh, these virtual accounts were provided by Providus Bank, which I mentioned before, who hosts a lot of virtual accounts on many apps. Piggyvest had to switch to Wema Bank over the weekend to power their virtual Nigerian accounts now. And you know they did that on their platform immediately. Even before these letters, companies like Rubies couldn't have their customers debit or withdraw their cash. And if you look at it, all of this is all happening together like one giant orchestra. A lot of companies are being affected. I most definitely may be wrong, but it's almost as if it's the fintech startups in general that are going through all of these. And these companies powering them as well are going through this. They are really in a rough spot right now. <sighs> That's a lot to unpack. What's the way forward? What's going to happen? How do we move on from here? As I speak, I'm sure many things will be changing and updating uh, from this day, from the day this video is published. So if you haven't, do subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter, at Fosudo, I will be sharing any update I get. 
And one thing is for sure, Nigerians are going to definitely find a way around this. Going back to the root of trading in Bitcoin by P2P or peer-to-peer -peer trading with individuals on platforms that we trust, Right now, on almost all these platforms, you are able to send and receive Bitcoin into your wallet, so you're covered. Also, speaking of solutions, if you're a freelancer who mainly receives foreign exchange, and if you still want to keep trading in Bitcoin or you just want to secure finances, I suggest you work on creating a domiciliary account in Nigeria. Most of them usually need two guarantors who hold a current account in commercial banks. The CBN is also trying to protect the USD. They don't have anything against domiciliary accounts as far as we know. Next up, create an account on the site like Payoneer. I'm not sponsored by Payoneer. They'll give you a US checking account and you can send direct dollar credit to your USD domiciliary account here in Nigeria. This is a major solution. It might take some time to implement for you, but it's one of the best solutions to these things. That's pretty much it guys. What are your thoughts about what's going on right now in Nigeria? Would you say the CBN was doing right by doing this? Could they have done something better? Just let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Also, on a lighter note, as you guys know, I'm Musicbed's first ambassador in Africa and all my songs that I use on my channel, all the songs, you know, come from Musicbed. All the songs I use in my YouTube videos, they're super awesome from very talented musicians. Whether you're a content creator, filmmaker, wedding videographer, you have something really cool for everyone. You can use awesome music for a small fee and make your work pop. I'll leave a link to sign up in the description below for that as well. Thank you so much for watching. Do leave a like on this video if you found it useful. Consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon if you want to see more of me. You'll be the first to know when I post a new video. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the very next video.